your number one source for local news. News Channel 3. Good Thursday evening, everybody, from the home office of the First Defense Doppler 3 Weather Center. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with a look at the possibility of severe weather, not for tonight, but into the next several weeks. If you have any plans for being outdoors or maybe you've just moved here and have never experienced weather like we have from time to time, now is the time to get ready for it. The National Weather Service has been teaching severe weather spotter training courses called Skywarn for num numerous years. I should know because I've been taking them since at least 1980. No, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. This is something that you can take as a civilian and participate in what's called citizen science. It's a good opportunity for you to learn beforehand what goes on and then during severe weather when things are going a little bit crazy then it's a good time to know what needs to be done beforehand where to go who to call things like that that's a good opportunity for you on that and if you'd like to learn more about it stick around and we'll explain why even though we just got into autumn it's very important you would think that well okay autumn things are settling down it's going to be getting colder and we're going to not have to worry about that yes we do we'll show you why in just a little bit national weather service there's actually one going on tonight in houston mississippi there'll be more of them coming up in the course of the next few weeks. You can see more from the National Weather Service. We'll give you the website here in just a little bit. One tonight in Houston, Mississippi. Numerous more of them coming up over the course of the next several days and weeks right on into October and possibly into November if they decide to stretch it out a little bit. This is going to be very important because, again, at this time of the year, we can get severe weather to happen at this time. If you don't believe me, ask people in and around Houston High School as we had a tornado out that direction in about 1996 six or so and we can have some pretty decent weather around here we can go for everything from heat waves to ice storms and severe weather at this time of the year right on in through early to mid-december it can happen and it does and now's the time to get ready for it these meetings last about an hour and a half they're totally worth it they're totally free paid for by your tax dollars i would highly recommend that for anybody who wants to know more about severe weather especially for kids. I've seen kids as young as eight years old take these courses and have a little bit more of a handle on a basically an uncontrollable situation. So something to think about there if you'd like to take this course about an hour, hour and a half out of your time. National Weather Service meteorologists and personnel will be teaching this course so you get a lot more information about what goes on when these actually happen and they're not going to be happening everywhere you may have to travel a bit to get to one of these but they are very well worth it so i'd highly recommend them what do you learn you learn about what needs to be talked about what needs to be looked for what especially needs to be called into the national weather service criteria looking for large hail of a certain size usually about one inch plus looking for damaging thunderstorm winds of about 55 miles per hour and also looking at the possibility of tornadoes rotating wall clouds You'll learn the difference between there are many types of clouds out there and you're especially looking for a wall cloud that part of the structure very out of place usually easily to recognize but not entirely so definitely want to think about that as you take these courses through here. You also notice that in this we may talk about flash flooding, but one thing is not on this list, lightning. Just because there's lightning making a thunderstorm does not automatically make it severe. Lightning is not a criteria for severe weather, so something to think about on that. If you're not sure about it, like it says at the bottom of the screen, make the report anyway. Go ahead and call it into the National Weather Service, and then they can put the information out on the weather wires, and then people like me get that information, and when we're doing weather coverage on air or online that's the type of stuff that we can pass along to other people so something to think about that your your information might be able to help other people besides just you your family your business your information could save a life and that's what skywarn is all about now why is this so important well during the rest of the day you can see that from midnight to midnight on this graphic when it comes to talking about things like severe hail, we can get them at various points in time. There are a couple of spikes right around midday that are a little bit out of place due to basic errors in data or other data that can be you know, explained away by anomalous information. But there is a large curve back toward the end during the hottest parts of the day. That's when the atmosphere is at its most turbulent. There's more energy to create more vigorous thunderstorms. But look at the right-hand side of the screen. Between midnight and 3 a.m., there's a distinct upward spike in reports of hail around the Mid-South. And this report covers over 50 years worth of data, giving us, us an idea as to what happens and when. So not only can severe weather happen at various points in time, it also increases 
across parts of the area statistically according to what we've seen to different reports out there. So this is important to notice because as we look at things like wind damage and also again flash flooding, things of that nature, the peak happens at various points in time. For wind damage and hail damage, you notice a distinct spike toward about late winter and into much of spring, early summer, and then it dies away as we head toward those August very hot doldrums where everything is usually pretty stable and doesn't really increase too much with severe weather strength. We also see an increase in the way of a maximum amount of hail damage out there and larger amounts of hailstones can happen in various points in time of the year. Now this one is the most important one because this shows the amount of tornadoes out there in red killer tornadoes in the black column, which means that the tornado has caused at least one casualty, therefore making it a killer. And you see that it basically peaks between about roughly February and about early May. But notice the right-hand side of your screen. As we go toward the later months of the year, you notice a distinct uptick in the threat of tornadoes from October from September, October, November, and into December. It's not huge. It's definitely not as big as the earlier graphic, but we do see that spike out there, and that accounts, again, for a pretty good uptick in the amount of small and medium tornadoes. They can happen at this time of the year, and sometimes they do. And again, if you don't believe me, just talk to people who live out around the Collierville, Germantown area, close to Houston High School, where they did receive a tornado back in about November, around Thanksgiving of 96, if I'm not mistaken. How do you get this information? Every Everything that I've told you, go to the National Weather Service in Memphis. You can find out more details, again, at weather.gov. Click on the Mid-South area where Arkansas, Tennessee, and Mississippi come together. Go to the left-hand menu and then click on the Skywarn tab, and you'll find more information about all this stuff going on to help you and your family, place of work, place of worship, stay safe, or at least safer when it comes to severe weather in the Mid-South. Knowing what to do beforehand is critical, and making certain that you have a plan beforehand is absolutely critical crucial, especially as we go into that second severe weather season peak of the year. Not just one for the Mid-South, but two of them, and that's something to be very much aware of and to make certain that you're ready to go beforehand when and if severe weather does become necessary there. Keep it tuned to News Channel 3 throughout the next few months. We'll keep you updated on the possibility of severe weather when it happens, not happening anytime soon. For a complete forecast update, head to my weather blog, Weather Overtime. Complete update of the forecast as we head into the next few days of autumn, which are not going to be feeling like autumn. Stay tuned for that and much more on News Channel 3 on air and online. Thanks for joining me for this update on severe weather safety.